Bellator MMA is gearing up for its first show of the new year, and it could be the promotion's biggest event yet. What is up, Fight Fans? Ron Kruk with Superbook Sports, joined by the man who will be headlining Bellator 290 on February 4th and on CBS. The man is going for his third consecutive heavyweight title defense, Ryan Bader. Ryan, good to see you. Thanks for taking some time with me today. Absolutely. What's going on, buddy? Not too much. I'm getting extremely excited for Bellator's premiere on CBS. I know you are too. Yep. Uh, you know, it, this is going to be such a massive event on so many different levels, Ryan. But, you know, on the top of the list is your rematch with legendary former Pride champion Fedor Emelianenko. Uh, I got to ask you, what was your initial reaction when Bellator officials proposed this rematch to you? Yeah, to be honest, I was kind of, I'm like, eh, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, all right, thinking about it, you know, what do I have to gain from this fight, right? Great point. And, um, you know, it'd be hard to go out there and do what I did to him the first time. It's just, it's hard to do, right? It was a sure. one-punch knockout, 35 seconds. Um, and then, you know, I kind of looked at it at the beginning as a lose-lose situation, you know? If I beat him again, cool, you already did it, you know, in 35 seconds. You know, if you lose, on the other hand... You know, but then I started thinking about it and then I found out it was going to be on CBS. I started getting real excited about it and, you know, thinking about this fight with Fedor, you know, um, I had the opportunity to be a part of his legacy and him a part of my, my legacy, Great you know, point. and then to do it again twice, you know, and then there's some upsides as being, you know, the only fighter that would ever beat him twice, you know, and, um, and then at the end of the day, when I heard it was on CBS, you know, and then let alone being Fedor, you know, huge audience, you know, one of the most popular fighters, greatest fighters of all time, you know, Absolutely. I started getting really excited about it. And, and, um, you know, I, I still am and I'm ready to go and, and it's going to be a big fight. You make so many good points with that breakdown. And like you said, I mean, you really couldn't have asked for a better result when you faced him mm -hmm. the first time, the 35 second first round knockout, is there anything, Ryan, that you could take away from that first fight that will benefit you in the rematch? Yeah, I mean, usually, you know, when you go in there and say you fight, you know, 25-minute war with somebody and you go the whole distance, you take a lot more away, sure. you know. And I think that's kind of where his headspace is at. You're like, oh, he got a lucky punch. You know, I can beat this dude. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it was, it was a takeaway, you know, in that 35 seconds was – you know, finding his trigger, basically. We all know Fedor. He likes to, you know, throw in combinations, and, and he's a buzzsaw, you know. And if you get exactly. in his face that he deems that he needs to throw, you know, um, he's going to come after you. And so I think I, I gauged that pretty well in the first fight, and that's what I was looking for. I was kind of finding the line and watching his, you know, his muscles, his eyes, his facial muscles to where when he was going to throw. And I saw that, you know, I would go, OK, mm -hmm. that's the line because I've seen him tense up about to go. And I kind of backed off and, and told myself, All right, that's where we need to be. And, you know, um, fainted and hit him with that punch. And, you know, it was over, you know. And so that's what I can kind of take away of reading his body to when he's about to throw because because mm -hmm. I read it the first time. Yeah, absolutely. I could see how that would be uh, something that, even though it, the fight didn't go that long, is something that you could look for again in this rematch. And 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 I was looking at his his record uh, since signing with Bellator. All six of his fights have ended in the first round, win yeah. or lose. Yeah. Uh, how do you see this fight playing out? And, and do you anticipate maybe another early finish? Yeah, I mean, he's one of those guys that's kind of live by the sword, die by the sword. You know, he's going to come after you and, and give it everything he's got. You know, um, if you're looking, if you're watching fights, you know, uh, one fight, he won this fight, but pops into mind is a chill Sonnen fight, right? Uh, mm -hmm. He goes out there, chills, pushing him hard, pushing him hard, and, you know, you know, grab the cage at one point on a takedown, whatever. But um, he stood up and he was kind of, he was like, whew, you know, um, <laughs> Tired, tired. It's very so true. He, it, he pulled it out, you know, gutted it out and ended up being chill, you know. But it's one of those things where with Fedor, you know, I, in his head, he's like, man, I don't want, I don't want to fight 25 minutes. I, he's never fought 25 minutes. He's fought 15 minutes, you know, and rarely, you know. Very and so true. he's kind of one of those guys where 
I think in his head, he's like, I need to go get the job done right now. And I'm going to expend my energy. And I think he overwhelms some people, you know, and, and um, if you kind of outlast that and, and say, you know, I'm in better shape. So, you know, if I'm feeling tired, he's got to be exhausted, you know? And so, um, but that makes him dangerous, right? He's going to put everything into, you you know, that combo or that flurry or that first round, you know? And so, um, you know, obviously, you know, I'm one of those guys that I rely a lot on, on my endurance, you know, especially here at heavyweight and I fought sure. the last couple of fights have been all five rounds, you know, in tough fights. And so, um, I've been there, done that, you know, he hasn't. And so I think the longer the fight goes, it definitely benefits me for sure. You know, but I do, I don't want to fight five rounds. I want to go in there and get a stoppage and, <laughs> you know, put a good, uh, um, put a good cap on the CBS show and, and, uh, you know, carry on. You know, adding some intrigue to this heavyweight title fight is the fact that Fedor has announced that this will be his final fight and he will be retiring after this bout. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, call his first retirement bout, I guess. That was in St. Petersburg, uh, Russia yeah. with Jens Pulver back in 2012. And uh, he beat Pedro Hizo that night. Um of course, he unretired and then signed about five years later with Bellator. But what I remember, Ryan, is there was this special feeling um, around that fight, knowing that this could be the last time that the the last emperor was yeah. going to enter the cage. Uh, emotionally, how do you not get caught up in that potential storyline and, and just take care of business? Yeah, I'm pretty good at that, kind of just leaving everything at the door, walking in that cage and just, I'm here to fight this man across the cage. I don't care who he is or what belts he has or, you know, what's going on after or during this fight, you know. So it's, it's one of those things where, yes, you know, uh, I know as an MMA fan, you know, if a legend is retiring, knowing it's their last fight, you know, you're going to want, want to watch him go out on top, you totally. know, just, you know, um, you know, just kind of, you know, kind of this last weekend with Shogun and Glover, you know, kind of retiring and stuff, you know, and it's, right. um, you know, so make no mistake. I know that 90% of the people, you know, in that arena probably are going to be, except my friends and family are going to be, you know, hoping for a good outcome on his end, you know, but I just keep my head down and do my job. I'm going to go in there and perform and my job is to go out there and beat them, you know, and I'm always going to show respect to that man, you know, before, during and after, you know, he has yeah. a legendary career. I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, you know, but he asked for this fight too, you know, so it, it's not like they just kind of matched us together. Or I asked for it, you know, he, he campaigned pretty dang hard for it, you know? And so I'm just going to go out there and do my job. And then at the end, you know, um, I hope everybody sends them off the right way. Yeah, absolutely. You've always been a class act in this sport, Ryan. And uh, once again, uh, you're showing that as you go into this heavyweight title fight. And of course, Superbook will have all the Bellator 290 odds available. So download the app today or check out Superbook.com. Sign up, make a deposit, and get in on all the Bellator and UFC action. They have some great sign-up bonuses available right now. Ryan, you come in as the favorite uh, to defend your heavyweight title, according to Superbook, at minus 330, a pretty big number. Fedor is the underdog at plus 270. Do you prefer that position, or would you rather be the underdog? Um, I don't I don't really pay attention to it too much. You know, I do like being the yeah. underdog. You know, um, what was it, two fights ago, I fought Mar Moldovsky, and I was a right. pretty substantial underdog. I think maybe even the same – kind of same odds as, as I think so, I, you know? And so I, I do like to kind of go in there and, you know, play the guy that you play the upset guy, you know? Um, right. But I don't pay too much attention to it in general. Like I said, even like we were talking about earlier, I go out there, I train my butt off. I know what I can do, you know, and, and go in there and do my job, keep my head down. And then, you know, at the end it's, you know, falls where it may it's, it's, you know, he's going to be retiring I'm hopefully going to get my hand raised, and it is what it is. Right. This will be your 38th professional bout. I mean, you had 20 fights in the UFC, uh, 11 in Bellator. As you come into the new year, you know, what else do you want to accomplish, and, and what are your goals for 2023? Yeah, I mean, I think I have 40 fights with the Ultimate Fighter, you know, and, and which is crazy. I I, I, didn't, I did not know, know I had that many fights, and 
Uh, somebody was asking me and I kind of looked at it real quick and I'm like, holy crap, you have four. It's amazing. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, my 41st fight. Um, you know, it I always want to I always want to be the best on a competitor. Been like that since I was early days in wrestling, you know. Um, that being said, too, I'm 39 years old, you know. Um, I feel better than ever, you know. Um, yeah. So my goals, I have three fights left on my including this one on my Bellator contract. Um, you know, and, and I want to go out as a champion it, whether that's like me retiring after the three fights, you know, we'll see, you know, I don't plan on fighting three, three more years, you know, but I got a couple good years left in me. Um, and I want to be, you know, go out on top, you know, and sure. that, it's one of those things where, you know, I'm not, I always thought when people started talking about that, you know, they did themselves a disservice because they were kind of half in and half out, but mm. you know, I'm all in right now and I have no expiration date in my head. So it's right. kind of like, we'll see, we'll see when the time comes. It's for me, it's when I don't have the ability or the want to go in there and train like I need to train to be, to give myself the best possible outcome walking into that cage, you know? It's a bad, bad place to be mentally walking the cage, knowing that you, you know, couldn't or did not do everything you need to do. So, um, I feel great right now, and you kind of, kind of see where it goes from there. But I'd like to, you know, go out there and beat Fedor. Um, yeah, definitely, probably get another one in. You know, by the end yeah, of the year, this year, know, and, and um, you know, and, and go out as one of the the longest reigning Bellator heavyweight title holders. Yeah, absolutely. That would be quite an accomplishment. Uh, and you know, maybe a couple of hypotheticals as we look ahead, you, uh, yeah. you're not overlooking Fedor, of course, but you know, former UFC heavyweight champion, Francis Ngannou has become a free agent. Um, you know, is, could you see maybe a future matchup with him if he signs with Bellator or, or is there anyone else you'd like to fight or, or maybe rematch? Um, Honestly, for me, it's just kind of, especially at this point, it's like who's next in the in the queue there, you know, and like sure. let's do it. And a lot of these have been rematches, you know, because uh, there's exactly. a uh, there's a lot of uh, tough guys, and those tough guys keep rising, you know. And, and even if you know they take a loss, you know, they're right in the wings, like a Moldovsky, right? You know, he goes in there and, and is clawing his way back, and a Litton Vassell, you know, I see one of those guys is kind of the next guy, um, you know, in France's deal, you know. Do I want to necessarily fight him? Probably not, but yeah, I will. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, I don't think anyone of, does. <laughs> no, nobody wants to fight that dude. You know, he's huge and scary. And massive power. You know, but it's one of those things you kind of come across it. You know, um, I've always been one to, you know, look at the here and now. You know, the fight in front of you. You know, and not look too far in the future. And it's it's done me well so far. You know, and so it's kind of like yeah. get this fight done, and then you know the next name comes about. And for me, it's become just kind of, it's, it's normal. You know, when I was younger, I used to stress about, Oh, you know, I'll have this guy down the road, this guy, whatever. And now I'm especially being at the top, you know, they'll put in whoever they want to put in and you got to work your ass off and go in there and, and get it done. Spoken like a true veteran, my man. I uh, love it. Hey, we appreciate your time. Uh, before we wrap up, I, I know that you've been working with the Navy SEAL Foundation. Yep. It's such a great cause, uh, one that's uh, close to my heart as well. Uh, please tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about what you're doing with the Navy SEAL Foundation. Yeah, there'll be a couple of SEALs there, you know, in the crowd for this February 4th fight. And, uh, so you got a few doing? more guys on your side. Yeah, a few more guys, you know. <laughs> Um, so what we're doing is we're, uh, raffling off, um, it's a Vulcan electric motorcycle. It's, uh, I got to ride it. It's, it's badass. Yeah. You know, it's not an e-bike. It's this full on motorcycle, all electric. Um, Damn. so we're doing, you know, taking donations. It's, um, all true, A L L T R O O.com backslash Bader. And, uh, you can and put a donation in and we're also, you know, whoever wins that bike also wins, a you know vip access tickets airfare hotel accommodations to bellator fight on march 31st at the changa you know so Heck it's yeah a, yeah and it, all that is going to the navy seal foundation and their ground great foundation i think 93 percent of every dollar goes to what it needs to wow. go to where other you know other ones will three cents on the dollar sometimes so, sure um they're sure. super legit and, and uh you know help those guys are at the uh you know top of their game and so 
Um, we're doing that in conjunction with Bellator. So I believe we've raised a decent amount of money, but you know, throw your name in the hat, supports, good cause. Absolutely a great cause. Ryan Bader, I know fight fans are extremely pumped up to see you defend your heavyweight title against Fedor Milianenko on CBS February 4th. So tell them why should they get to Superbook and make a wager on you? Yeah, you know, I, I, I hate when people bet on me, but uh, I mean, I, you know, it's one of those fights where if, if I look at him, look at it, you know, he has to come out and knock me out to get the win, you know, and that's, uh, um, that's not always easy, you know, and, uh, you know, with my track record and all that, you know, I feel like it's a good bet, you know, even though I am the favorite, I'm the favorite for a reason, because, you know, odds makers see that, you know, I have the tools to win and the more tools to win where, you know, he might have one, you know, and so, um, you know, go to Superbook and place your bet. Hopefully I'll make Awesome, buddy. Great to speak with you, Ryan. Uh, best of luck at Bellator 290 and best of luck the rest of the year. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it.